step before here. Now we have this nice little thing here, this JavaScript expression. So I'm going to copy it all. Copy. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit of cheating here. It's probably a better way to do this, but it works for me. Uh, I'm going to open up Notepad just for a second here. I'm going to paste that information in. Let's take a look at here. If, and in quotes, it says, if this particular field and the exclamation mark equals means if it's not equal to nothing, which is this here, then it's going to be true. Okay, so if this is nothing, it's not equal to nothing, so it'll come up false, okay? So if I want to check for to the existence of something in that parsed file, something should show up. So something doesn't equal nothing, and it'll be true. So all I have to do now is go to here and grab that result, okay? And I'm going to go into here. I'm going to substitute it into here. Okay, so there we have that field. I'm going to grab the whole thing. And I'm going to go back down to here. And then I'm going to lay it into here. Okay, so basically what we said to the program is, if you actually find something, if, it's, if the, whatever you parse out is not nothing, then continue on. Okay, so I, I removed that step just a minute ago while I had the screen paused. I'm going to place it back in, so I'm going to say go from here to here. <clears throat> if you actually find something, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the green here, to the blue here. Now, why is that important? Let me throw another web action in here for you. I'm going to do another step, branch step, and I'm going to also do another macro here. Oh, hold on, I've got to do this in sequence. I've got to do a get, and then I've got to do a macro. I'm going to crack open the macro editor once again. And I'm going to do a JavaScript and debug, and I'm going to create an alert that says, Hey, something's wrong. Now, let's test that macro. See, it pops up an alert that says, Hey, something's wrong. I couldn't find the email confirmation message. There we go. So let's test that again. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to copy that. I'm going to minimize it. And I'm going to lay it into the macro field here. Okay. So if I didn't find that parse message, I can double click on the, the red, double click on the blue. It's actually just going to throw a message. And because there's nothing else beyond here, it's the actual execution is just going to stop. Okay. But let's say everything works good. It's going to come up here. Okay, we've got all our steps in. We do our initial setup. We get to this point here. We send off the confirmation. We have it look for the confirmation. Doesn't find it, throws an error. Everything looks good. Okay, now what we can also do too is we can use that same idea here. So I'm going to put a web action here. I'm going to drag a step onto here. I'm going to do another get. I'm going to do another macro. And I'm going to just go back to the macro editor. And I'm going to change that message to OK. Say something's wrong. I couldn't finish signing up in the first steps. OK. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go back to here. And I'm going to lay that into here. OK. So there we go. We've got that there. And I'm going to, because this is, again is an if statement, if it doesn't find that on a page, what I want to do is double click on the red, double click on the blue. Okay. Now I wanted to throw that message. And again, there's nothing else to go on here, so it just stops. So, so you're seeing a little bit of simple logic going on here, too. Okay. I know this is fairly complicated if you're just looking at Xenobot or Xenoposter. But it is pretty good, OK? So there we go. And what we could do is we could throw a message in the end here. Now, if you're doing a lot of automation, having messages pop up probably is not indicative of, of a good workflow. Maybe you're saving a log file. But it's pretty much the same idea. Instead of creating a message, you're just saving it as a log file. So let's go back to the actual macro builder. Okay, 
says test that, all is great. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste that into here. So that's good. So what we want to do is we want to save it. Okay. And we've created a program. Now the final thing you can do with this actual piece of the puzzle here is actually debug it. And what debugging means is you actually run a step-by-step uh, step of the actual program you got going here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just open this up a little bit, okay, and you can see it's stopped. And I'm going to hit play. Okay, we wait it to finish. You can see that's going red, yellow to green, red, yellow to... Okay, it's just taking a second here. Okay, so you see our next button has now gone blue again. Okay, we just have to wait a second. See here, it's high, it's grayed out, it's not even going to let us move ahead. We can hit next again. And in the background, if you watch carefully, you can see whatever action we're working on is actually highlighted in blue. It's a fantastic utility for actually debugging when something could go wrong. Okay, let's go down to here, let's watch what's going on here. Now it should be grabbing a, a random username, random password. Okay, you can see we got some problems here. And you can see again we have some problems here, and I'm not I'm not surprised. Simply and this is part of actually debugging. You've got to go through and you have to debug your programs as time goes on. And I don't expect this to work simply because of the fact that um, we've already used the name so it's not going to take it. Now you see here it's kind of stuck, it's green but this isn't running. You have to open up the caption window okay? and inside the caption window you see that the actual caption is ready for us to enter. Hit, hit enter okay? and now you see that it's come up I can close the caption window again because the blue's next has come up I can enter it, it enters that in we press the that there now I'm gonna, it's going to try to create user. Now it's going to look for that text. Okay. I'm going to press next. And next. Okay. I'm going to show you something off screen here a little bit. I'm going to move this other way. If I bring this window up a little bit, you're going to see that the regular expression is thrown back a false. Let's see where we're at. We are at this ball right here and that's exactly what we want to see. Okay? Because it's not completing properly. So let's see what happens. See that? It popped up the message in behind. Hey, something's wrong. I couldn't finish the finish sign up in the first steps. I click OK. Next comes up. I hit next again. And you can see down here in the log file once again, templates executed successfully. So in other words, it's finished executing. It doesn't know whether it's good or it's bad, but with our logic we can make a decision either way. And that is just a really quick demo. Now I can stop the debug, and we've created our first program. Now you'd want to go through here, make changes, make things work properly. Uh, you can get more complicated and figure out how to put the logic into we've chosen a random username uh, but it didn't particularly like it had that it had uh, things in there it didn't want so what we can do too is set it up to grab maybe emails from a file okay and grab it create a random password probably password one two three is not the right password but this just gives you a really good feel we've been going along here for about 35 minutes and uh, I'm sure your brains full but I felt that it was important you had a good demonstration on how to do this. Now finally if we were to go to the next step here we could fire up Xenoposter Pro or Xenoposter if you've got the standard version. Let me just fire it up here for you. Okay once again this is a little bit this tutorial has gone on pretty good already so this is going to move outside the scope of the tutorial but you have a lot of different tabs in here and I'll show that to you in a different video but I'm just going to for the time being add a template and I'm going to grab the uh, the siphon sign up, the one we just did. I'm going to open it up. Okay, I'm going to select only one thread, one task. I want it to run once, and I want it to try once. Okay, 
Now you can see that it's there, and this is yellow, and it doesn't seem like you can launch the threads or anything, so there's, you don't, it's kind of, you don't really know what to do. The final step is you actually have to assign a thread. Now watch this go from yellow to green, okay? I'm going to assign one thread. Okay? And as soon as it has a thread to make available to play, what it'll do is it'll go green. There you go. Okay, so I'm going to actually click on that to have an attempt. It should crack open a window for us here, which it did. And you'll see that whole sequence occur in automation. Once again, we have to ensure that we open up the window for entering CAPTCHAs. You see that's open there. I'm going to pop this open here and let them sit side by side so you can see them. Okay, it's popped up the CAPTCHA for us. I'm going to hit enter. I'm just going to get the capture window out of the way. And as you can see, hey, something went wrong. I can't finish signing up. So there you go. Sorry, a little bit of noise in the background there. And you can see how in Xenoposter how we actually do the final sequence. Okay, sorry about that guys. So that's how you can see in Xenoposter we have actually run a job. I've done a very simple method here for you. Be careful if you assign too many processes and attempts. It will try to do it multiple times. And uh, there you go. There, there's a nice quick tutorial for you, taking you through the whole process. Good luck on your work with Xenoposter as well as Project Maker. This is Frank Thomas from YouBotJunkie.com. Hope you enjoy. Cheers.